I really wanted to save this video for the very end of my nursing journey. I've got three months left, but I thought this week, some of you have had your A-level results back. Some of them are good news. Some of them aren't so good news. Some of you haven't quite got the grades that were expected maybe. So I think this is a perfect time to release this video and just hopefully give you the motivation and determination that you need to keep going, keep being amazing and to just say that things uh, that sometimes they don't always go to plan but it's definitely for the right reasons I think it might not seem like it now but I know for me personally um it, it was definitely the right reasons that things happened to me and it's taken me this long so here we go also I'm going to apologize for the lighting because the sun is shining and it's going in and out of clouds and I'm sat in front of the window so the lighting might change in this video. I'm really sorry. It's very annoying, I know. But the sun is shining and that's amazing. So let's get started. So I've mentioned in previous vlogs that it's taken me around 10 years to be where I am right now but actually when I think about it it's probably more like 15 years possibly 14 years. So let's go back to the very, very start. I'm going to rewind myself back to my seven-year-old self. So I was, firstly, I was brought up by my nan and granddad. Some things happened, unfortunately, and I was living with them from the age of two. So they were my parents. They were my mum and dad, as far as I was concerned. And then when I was seven years old, my granddad died at home. We had the district nurses come out and care for him and treat him at home. And I literally saw everything. So from a very, very young age, I was sort of faced with health issues, um, medical issues. And this was the first time I'd ever seen a nurse. And I just remember, I don't know who these people were. I didn't know what they were doing to my granddad. I didn't fully understand it. I was only seven years old, but I just remember feeling that amazement and just thinking wow you're doing an amazing incredible job I don't know what you're doing but I looked up to them I didn't fear them because they were medical professions or anything I actually felt myself looking up to them and they were helping my granddad so it was a good thing and that's the first time I really discovered nursing I at the time I didn't think about myself as a nurse I just knew I admired them and I admired what they did and then fast forward to my 15 year old self. So then this is the time that unfortunately my nan got cancer and she passed away. She didn't die at home, luckily. She probably remembered to when my granddad died at home and how horrific it was. So she probably didn't want us to go through that again. So she was admitted to hospital and it was seeing that different side to it different sides of the wards, the hospital setting, how they cared for my nan. And me being 15, I didn't understand it still. I didn't understand what was going on. I didn't want to understand it because this was something that's taking my family one by one. I didn't want to understand cancer and I didn't like it. I didn't want to know the physiology of it. I wanted to push it out of my mind, out of sight, out of mind. I spent time with friends. I avoided it completely. Then after my nan died, I regretted that and I regretted not knowing enough, not spending enough time with my nan. I regretted a whole lot of things anyway that continued for a while and it ate me up inside. And that's one of the reasons why I wanted to go into nursing was because I want to know more. I don't want that to happen again. I don't want my family to suffer and me not to be able to help. I want to be that person that helps. It's it, in my eyes, my own opinion, sorry if this offends anyone but in my eyes you should be the person caring for your family it shouldn't be up to a stranger and some people like that some people I understand some people want would rather a stranger to wash them and dress them their own family members but just for me my own comfort I want to be that person doing that for my family I want to look after my family and I'm going to make sure that that doesn't happen again so that's one of the reasons I wanted to become a nurse but anyway when my nan passed away, I was 15, as I said, and that was right smack in the middle of my GCSEs. I know, not good guys, not good. So I had to, I moved back in with my biological mother. It didn't go down too well, unfortunately, but hey ho, it happened. I was there. I lived with my mum for a while until I was old enough to move out and get my own life and things. And yeah, I pretty much failed my GCSEs. I didn't, well, I can't say I failed because I got a B for art, a C for French, 
everything else maths english science we're all, they're all decent ease they they're not even worth it because they're not even classed as anything because universities a levels you need an a to c grade so discontinued done and i think i put myself down a lot I, I didn't think about things that was going on around me. I didn't think about my nan at the time. I didn't think about the move that I'd had, the change I'd have. I put it down to, it's me. I'm rubbish. I'm really bad at school. I'm not good enough to do anything. And so I didn't pursue anything. I didn't pursue a career. I didn't know what I wanted to do when I left school. So I followed on from my mum's footsteps and she worked in hospitality. So I worked in hospitality. I did chambermaiding or housekeeping, whatever you want to call it. Um, but I cleaned rooms and it was amazing. It was one of my favorite jobs. I've talked about this before in another vlog, so I'm not going to go into that. Um, I did waitressing, I did banqueting waitressing. I worked in a factory, putting labels on gammon. Oh, horrendous, please. No, that is the worst job as well as waitressing, I hated waitressing. No offense if you love waitressing. I worked in shops. Uh, actually, I loved working in shops. I worked in Debenhams, WH Smiths, and they were really good places to work. Not name dropping or sponsored for any of this. Um, but I loved retail. I loved talking to people and things like that. Still didn't know what I wanted to do with life. And it wasn't until one of my friends said to me, have you ever thought about nursing? I can see you as a nurse. And I thought, really? Nursing? A nurse? Me? I'm not sure and I'm not sure how I would find out if I'd ever be good at something like that because I'd never even thought about it. It's never even crossed my mind other than the healthcare experiences that I'd had. But even then, I didn't know that I would be a nurse. I didn't feel confident enough. I didn't think I'd be intelligent enough because I always saw nurses as a high profession. You had to be intelligent. You had to be born into that profession. And none of my family uh, have got degrees. They've never been to university. So it's not something that ever crossed my mind. And so I thought, okay, maybe I should look into this actually, because I do like caring for other people and helping other people. And when I think about my childhood, I was always helping other people as a child. When my friends got cut and bruised, I would make these little potions, this medication for them, out of leaves and rose petals and water and make this little lotion and I'd put it on the cut and then I'd wrap it with leaves to make them better. Weirdly enough, it worked. I know, I must be magic. Yeah, actually that story I think was in my personal statement as well. Just a tip, put in a fun story. So yeah, so I didn't know apart from that. But when I thought back to my childhood, I was actually, actually, I am a caring person. I used to do these things and I used to pick up pigeons with broken wings and try and help them. And how has it never occurred to me that I should be a nurse because I'm naturally helping healing person. And then I thought, okay, let me look into this. So I looked into being a carer and I found my first care home job in an elderly home. It was a residential home, we didn't have nurses. So again, we had the district nurses come out and I was so interested in what they did. So I would always offer to sit with them and help them in any way I could. And I just remember being fascinated and loving what they did. And it was there that I found my passion for nursing. And I thought, do you know what? I need to be a nurse. And this, I think, is where my career is gonna lie. Back then it was the diploma. So I found out I had to have my MVQ2 and MVQ level three to get into the diploma. So I did those. I progressed, I become a team leader. A few years passed. I applied, my first ever university I applied to was Canterbury. I had my interview. I actually got accepted onto the diploma. And I, this was in 2008 by this time. So it took me three years to do my MVQs and my maths and English GCSE again. But I withdrew and I thought, you know what, it's not the right time. I, it, something doesn't feel right. I don't think I'm gonna do this. I again had that confidence of, I'm not sure I can do it. I don't know if I'm smart enough to do this. Am I good enough for the job? It was all, I think 101 different reasons, but I just didn't, I didn't end up going on to the course. So then I went back into to just being a carer. And then I switched again from doing care work because I thought, let me just go back into doing something else. So I did a bit of learning disabilities for um, about a year and a half, adults with learning disabilities. Then I went into work in theatres, in the operating theatres or the pedics, which was actually amazing. I loved the job, but for me, I like to talk to patients and I like to be the one helping the patient rather than just sitting on the sidelines. So I didn't really enjoy that as much, but it was interesting to see the operations. So I uh, left that again and then I thought, maybe nursing's not for me because I've tried these things and I'm not really liking it. And then I went back into hospitality for a bit. 
I worked in coffee shops, I did waitressing and bar work, and then I went back into care work. I know. So I flipped quite a lot between care and hospitality, care and hospitality. So come 2010, I got my care job again. I was there for two years. I was living in Birmingham at the time but then when I went to apply for it um, they said to me sorry we've cut all the diplomas this is the time when it moved from a diploma course onto a degree only course I was like oh no so then I was massively put off again didn't want to do the degree because all I could think about is the dissertation 10,000 words I'm not going to be able to do that and that's all I kept telling myself I decided do you know what no I'm going to do this let me find out what I need to do to do the degree and I'll do it so I found out I had to do the access course. I went and I did the access course, passed it, thank God. And then I applied to university and I actually got a place in university. So I actually started my nursing degree officially first time round, because this is my second time, if you don't know. First time round, I started it in 2012. I did five months. So I did my first placement, first OSCE, and I think we were starting to write our first assignment as well. I can't remember, but I hadn't done that much. It was only five months. It didn't feel like I'd done that much at university, but I'd been there a long, long enough to make friends and build bonds with people and know that it's what I want to do. A hundred percent. I love it. It's amazing. So at the time I was living with my so-called best friend and, um, I can't say too much without breaking confidentiality because I don't want to say bad things about people on camera because that's not very nice, but we didn't get on at the end. I was living with her for a couple of years, two years, I think it was. This person was going through a divorce at the time and I feel like she was taking that out on me quite a lot. I was renting her spare room because it was cheaper for her. She needed money, blah, 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 all of that. And she didn't treat me very nice. She wasn't a very nice person to me. And we ended up in the end coming to a bit of an argument. And then we agreed that it wasn't working out. So I said, you know what, let's wait until my next student loan goes in, which is, I think was in the June or July time. I think it was in the June. So it was only a few months. I said, that gives you enough time to find someone to have the spare room. So you're sorted. Cause I didn't want to leave her in the lurch or anything like that with that. Cause that's not fair. And then that gives me a time to save for somewhere because I literally have no one, no one. I had no one to live with. I had no money. I had literally nothing. And she knew this. So we, we agreed. We said we'd wait till June. And then the following day after this conversation, I went down to London to see some friends and I had a text message telling me basically to get out of the house, move out, get the stuff. That's it. And I could have done one or two things. So I'm not blaming her completely for this. But I could have done one of two things. I could have sorted out. I could have gone back and I could have argued with it, with it. And I could have said, no, I haven't got money. You can't do this, blah, blah, blah. But it got to the point where I was tired. I was tired of arguing. I was tired of living there. I was tired of being treated like that. It wasn't fair. And I thought, do you know what? Don't, just don't reply. Don't say anything, nothing. So I went back, I cleared all my stuff out and I moved out. I had to move back in with my mum because I had nowhere to go. At the time, my mum lived in Milton Keynes. So I was commuting from Milton Keynes to Birmingham. It was smack bang in the middle of placement. So I was commuting. It was taking me two hours by train to get to placement every day, which was hell. It was hell. I couldn't afford it. I got into debt because of it. And it, I looked for places to live. I went to my personal tutor. I got help from the uni. But the, it was just coming to dead ends. I had nowhere to go. I had no money. I had no way of funding. I could have applied for hardship funding, but they said it could take up to six weeks. I didn't have six weeks. Because not only that, my mum was in the middle of moving herself from Milton Keynes to Suffolk, which is like a five plus hour journey from... Birmingham and there's no way I could ever have done that. So eventually after trying every resource possible and everything I could to stay at university, I unfortunately had to withdraw and I left basically. And it was probably one of the hardest decisions I had ever made. But now I think back, if I had qualified back then, or even in 2008 when I did the diploma, 
I wouldn't be the nurse that I would be today after all the experiences that I had. So I'm really grateful for that. And if I ever saw that friend again, I haven't seen her since, but if I ever saw her again, I would thank her. I would say thank you for putting me through that because actually it made me stronger. It made me more determined, more motivated than ever. And I wouldn't be in my dream role right now. I wouldn't be doing half the things that I've done and I wouldn't be as good as a nurse as I am going to be because of it. So I actually appreciate and really don't regret anything. I would go over and do it all again if I could. I wouldn't change a single thing because it's really shaped who I am today because of it. But anyway, <laughs> so I moved to Suffolk. I moved back in with my mum for a year and then realised I I literally can't do this I can't cope I need to go and do my nursing because that's what I was made to do so I looked online this was 2014 now so 2014 I looked online for a job back in Birmingham somewhere to live I found my perfect job in sexual health because that's what I wanted to do because I don't know I'd been watching the sex clinic on television realized that that's an amazing area to work in it looks like a laugh all the staff were friendly the patients were amazing the diversity of every single day Everything about it attracted me to it and I said, that's what I need to do. So I looked at NHS jobs. I found, surprisingly, a healthcare assistant role, managed to get an interview, smashed the interview, did the interview, got the job, got my place in sexual health as a healthcare assistant, which is amazing because they trained me to do bloods. I've got all these amazing clinical skills from it. And yeah, so I moved back to Birmingham in 2014. And then... This is a long story, guys. I'm really sorry. This is going to be hours, okay? So then, working in sexual health, um, I heard about being seconded. So if you're seconded, you you can be seconded from your employer to go and do your nursing. They fully fund it, pay for it. You get your Bantu wages still. And you can come back and work for the company as a qualified nurse as a result at the end of your three years. But you're tied into a contract then of... I think working back for the company for three years as a qualified nurse when you finish. So I applied for the secondment. I thought, this is amazing. Why wouldn't I do that? Applied for the secondment twice. Didn't get it both times. The first time was because I had an interview at BCU because you have to guarantee your place first at university and then they'll give you the secondment. My interview went horrendous. I wasn't prepared. I didn't research anything. I didn't even know the six C's. I knew nothing. It was horrendous. So it's no brainer. I didn't get that. And I'm not surprised I didn't get that. So I didn't get this comment. So then I was like, oh, okay. So I tried again. I thought, I'm not going to give up. I'm going to try again. I'm more prepared now. I know what the interview's like. I'm going to smash it. So I went and I did the interview again for this comment. Um, I felt okay in the interview. Uh, I was a bit like that. I'm not too sure if I sold myself enough, but you never know. And then I didn't get it again. So I thought, Okay, let me just get some feedback because I'm not too sure what happened this time. So what the feedback was from that was because they've got so many students, we've all got the same qualifications, we've all got the same experience. So they really have to nitpick at little tiny things to sort of get rid of people, basically, to narrow it down and choose who they want for this secondment. And they purely said your confidence, it was your confidence and you didn't sell yourself. If you just sold yourself that little bit more, you would have got this, no problem over everybody else. I was just like, oh, again, my confidence has come into play. I was so unconfident. I was really uncomfortable selling myself, didn't do it and really kicked myself for it. So I thought, you know what? I'm going to forget about this comment. I can't apply for the third time because that's too much. Let me just apply straight to the uni. I've been through that interview before. Let me do it. So... I applied to university direct without this comment, completely self-funded. The there was still a bursary then, thank God. Went into my interview, I felt really confident. I was prepared, I'd revised, I knew the six C's out inside out. I could tell them everything about the six C's and give it examples. And I got my place. I got my place, finally got my place. So I finally started this journey, January 2017. And again, I started university with just wanted to get my head down. I didn't want to do anything other than pass this degree, finally become a nurse. After six months of first year, I found something inside me, some fire, some motivation, dedication, everything inside me burnt up because I realised I can do this. My confidence came, my self-belief came, my self-worth came, everything came back to me. And I thought, do you know what? I can bloom and do this. I can be an amazing nurse. I can help other people. Isn't that amazing? What other career can you do that in? There's no nothing like it. And 
I was so determined. I thought about all of these years that I've wasted feeling unconfident, self-worth had gone down the hill, putting myself down all the time, not thinking I can achieve anything with my life, being this, I, I always saw myself as this low life shell of myself. For what? For nothing? And um, now, fast forward to, I've got three months left, I am smashing this degree, I'm smashing placements. Okay, my grades are like, here right now they're not top anymore at first year i smashed it i was getting 90s 80 percent second year they went down to 70s third year i don't think i'm gonna get those marks that's fine I'm not bothered at all um but the fact that i'm gonna pass is amazing i've only got three months left i've already bagged myself my perfect career i'm an amazing job doing what i love i'm gonna put on my blues i'm gonna finally be a qualified nurse from having no GCSEs, failing at life, having no confidence in myself. It's just amazing. And now I'm thinking, do I do a master's? Do I do a PhD? My ambitions have just gone up. I want to be a nurse prescriber. I want to be an advanced nurse practitioner. Um, I, I want to teach. I want to do 101 different things. The world is literally my oyster now. It's amazing. So moral of this long winded story, thank you so much for getting to the end, but there's a point I promise. The moral of this story is whatever your grades that you've just got, if you have failed anything, if you didn't get the grades good enough to get into the particular university that you want, don't worry. These things happen. Everything happens for a reason. You might not understand that reason right now, but for me, if I had qualified in 2008, I would not be the nurse that I am today. I would, I'm telling you now, I would be an awful nurse. Looking back at how I was back in 2008, even in 2012, I would have been an awful nurse. I would not be the nurse I am today with this amount of dedication, motivation, determination in my heart, in my soul, with the knockbacks I've had. I've had so many knockbacks, people bringing me down people trying to stop me. I've had all of my family die. Um, my nan, my granddad, my mum, um, my dad, who I call my dad, is actually alive still. He's doing amazing. He's going to stay that way because he's got to be at my graduation or that's it. I'm going to give up at that point. Um, but he will be there. I, do you know what? It's all worth it. It's all everything. I don't regret a single thing. And it's the same with you. If you haven't got the grades that you didn't expect, don't worry, you've got years ahead of yourself. You've got so many years of your life to sort it out. You just have to sit down, look at what is the career for you? What career do you want? Have you got the grades to get that? If not, okay, do something about it. Don't sit around, don't sit on it, don't give up, don't feel sorry for yourself. Please dry your face, do something about it. Turn that emotion into determination to motivation to positivity turn it around change those grades do something about it don't sit on this do not quit ever follow those dreams and you can achieve anything because realistically what can you do you can retake those exams you can retake assignments you can do a different course you can do the access course that'll get you straight into university you can do all sorts of foundation courses diplomas um b techs a techs as techs <laughs> whatever you want just look at all the different routes into the career that you want to go into please don't beat yourself up because grades don't mean anything all great all a grade means is it gets you into somewhere, okay? The grade itself doesn't define you as a person. It doesn't take, when you're sitting in an exam, that grade doesn't take into consideration the mental blocks that you're having during that exam because you're so nervous, you're so stressed, you wanna do well. It doesn't take that into consideration and it doesn't reflect real life. It doesn't reflect you as a person and the knowledge in your brain that you do have and the confidence that you have out there being a real person in the real world and not in an exam condition. So please do not take that grade on board. It's not you. It's not a genuine reflection of who you are as a person because you are amazing and you're going to go on to do great things. So have some self-belief and just never, ever give up on your dreams because if I can do this, anybody can do this. Mm -hmm.